This conference will now be recorded. Yeah, I don't have power here, uh, so I'll take the session till my laptop has got the charging. Okay, and it will be dark also here, right? So let me uh, what we are discussing what BDC. So yesterday we have seen how to migrate the data from what local text file to what SAP system using what direct input method. So what is the concept we are following in the yesterday session? We are reading the data from the local text file to internal table into the and then we are uh, migrating it to final internal table field by field and then we are inserting into what SAP system uh, without doing any kind of validations. Now I'll take the same file. Okay, assume that this is a file cust2.txt. What is the delimiter here? Delimiter is what tab here. Okay, I want to transfer this data into what SAP system using a technique called as call transaction technique okay, using what call transaction technique so data migration using call transaction technique okay so what is the concept here in the stress case we have three levels legacy system internal table and sap here we require what uh, some five levels first you have to get the data from legacy system to internal table and then from internal table to what something called as BDC data internal table and then from BDC data internal table you have to map it to what transaction and then from transaction you have to migrate it to what SAP system so your transaction is nothing but module pool dialogue transaction so what you have to do is first in call transaction technique is what is the data you want to migrate this is the data I want to migrate which contains what customer data so we need to analyze the file file data what is the data available customer data so what is the target table k1 what are the fields customer number land one and what name one so as part of this data migration as part of this data migration what we require if you see the diagram we require what so a transaction nothing but what a module pool screen so first let me keep the module pool transaction ready so first what i have to do is i need to develop a module pool program okay so let me develop it i'll give the name as something a c uh, i'll give the name of the program as something i'll choose program i'll give the program name let me give the program name as z z what 7 am what BDC MPP yeah, Z7M BDC MPP done I'll press enter program does not exist do you want to create the object yes one second this one second it's dark one second
Yeah. So I'm trying to create the program here. I'll create the program with the top include done. Let me give the name of the top include as you have to start with Z and with what top. I'll give it as Z7M BDC MPP top. Type of program is module pool. Let me save it. I'll save it in the local object. Done. So first I need to create the screen. I'll right click on the program. I'll say create screen. I'll give the screen number as something unread. Provide some description. I'll give the description as something screen unread. Then what is the screen type? Layout, normal screen only. I'll go to layout. And here you have to design the screen. We need to design the screen. So in this screen, what fields you have to consider? Already we have analyzed our file. Our file contains what customer data means what table came on table. What are the fields customer number land one and name one. So keeping that file in mind, I'll create the screen layout by referring to which table can one table. What are the fields I need to consider customer number land one and what name one done. So these are the fields I'm considering these three fields continue. Right. I'll place it here. Right, so see the name of this field k one iphone customer number. This is k one iphone land one. k one iphone what? Uh, name one. Done. Then I'll take some buttons here. I'll take some three buttons. I'll give the name of the button as B1. Text shall read as something insert. Function code, let us give it as something FC1. Some function code. Then for this button, I'll give the name as B2. Text shall read it as something exit. Function code, I'll give it as FC2. Then the name of this button is B3. Text, I'll give it as something, what should I do? Cancel. Cancel. And function code, I'll take it as what? FC3. So this should act as a cancel button. So already we know if you want to make a button to act as a cancel button, we need to set an additional property called as what? Function type. So I'll set function type to what E. E indicates what here exit command. Already we discussed this in module four. Function type to what E. So so that we can do the forceful exit. So let me save it. Check for the syntax error. Activate this. Right. So my module two program is created with the required field. So what is my requirement? When I click on the insert button, right? I should insert this data into what SAP table. Okay. So let us write the logic. I'll activate this. So what is the event trigger when you click on the button? PAI event. So in the flow logic section, the PA event, PA model. I'll choose what top include program. Continue. I'll write the model definition inside the top include program. This is my top input program. Yeah. So I'll say case sci upon case sci upon. Yeah. When what? FC1 means exit button. Sorry, insert button. Do so and so. When FC2. What I have to do? I have to say leave program. Okay, leave program. Done. And then end case. You have to write the logic for the cancel button now. So how do we write it? You have to define what? One at exit command module. Already we discussed this in module pool. So what you have to do in the PA event, I need to define what? At exit command 
module so i'll say module module name what is this at exit command okay this module gets executed only when you click on the buttons whose function type is set to what e so double click on the module name does not exist i'll choose the top include program continue save it so what is the purpose of the cancel button to do the forceful exit even if the validations are what fail case i you come the function code of that button was fc3 when fc3 what is this leave program leave program and then what end case save it check for the syntax no errors go back activate this done then uh, every module to program we have to create what transaction code so i'll right click on the program create what transaction i'll give the name of the t code as something uh, z b d c something z b d c short text as a short text t code for t code for b d c m p p done what is the program name z 7 a m b d c m p p z 7 a m b d c m p p screen number is what 100 select the checkbox sap j for windows done save your t code right click on the program and activate your program done let me execute this i click on the program execute direct process so i just repeat once again what we are trying to do we are trying to do the data migration from local text file to sap system and i want to do it by using what call transaction technique so as part of call transaction technique we require what transaction we require a screen through which the data will be migrated okay so by analyzing the file we understood that the file contains what customer data three fields so which table k and one table so keeping that file in mind i created my custom transaction custom module to program and what is the t code i gave for that program zbdc okay let me right click on this activate once execute execute direct processing done right i'll click on exit button working fine okay now i have tried the logic for uh, insert also now i have tried the logic for insert button so tell me how do you do it this what are the data is available here this data should be inserted into my k one table so how do you proceed anyone how do you proceed anyone i have to write the logic for the insert button so the event triggered is pa only when FC1, I have to insert the data into database table. Anyone? One second. yes anyone what is the solution how to insert the data into my k one table what are the data entered on the screen what are the data entered on the screen that data we have to insert into the k one table so how do we proceed yes anyone Okay, I'm checking the transaction individually. Suppose I'll enter the data here. I'll enter the data. When I click on the insert button, this data should go and sit in the K9 table. So how do we approach? What is the logic? Yes, anyone? Raghavendra, Srikant. Chinna, anyone? 
Yes, are you there uh, online? Is my voice is audible? Hello. Yeah, is my voice is audible online? Uh, yeah, so what is the solution? This entire thing is one record only. Now, how do we insert one record into database table? Let's say we are seen. Let's say we are seen how to insert records into the database table through internal table. So, if it is internal table, let's say we are seen what? Modify, yeah, KNA1. Modify KNA1 from table. What is that? Internal table. This is syntax we are seen yesterday. Now, I have to insert one record at a time now. so what do you have to say modify k one from what from what work area work area so i require what work area this work area should contain how many fields work area should contain the same number of fields same structure as that of what database table so here what i have to do i have to collect the data from the screen fields what are my screen field names here if you go to the layout the screen field names are what k one if kunna k one if land one k one if what name one okay the screen field names are starting with what k one so i need to collect those fields into work area and from 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 work area we have to insert into what database table so what i'll do is simple logic okay so i require a work area which should contain same number of fields as that of k one so simply I'll say tables what K one. What this tables K one will do? It will create a work area with what? All the fields of K one. Then what you have to do? The screen field names are also starting with K one. So simply I'll say modify. Modify what? K one from K one. I need not give this from K one also. Simply you can say modify K one because my work area name is also what K one. Understood my work here name is also K1. The screen field names are also starting with what? K1. So modify K1. What this will do? It will either insert or what updates the record. So then I will say if size of RC is equal to zero, I'll say what? Message record what? Affected. Record affected. Type what? Information message. Else I'll just give a message. A record not affected not affected type what i and if that's all Yeah. So what I have to do here? Simply I have to say uh, end if that's all. Record affected or record not affected. That's all. So let me test it now. Save it. Check for the syntax error. Activate this. We have to do it using BAPIS. Okay, we have to do it using BAPIS. Okay, but we don't know how to use BAPIS at this stage. That's the reason I'm directly using what? Uh, I'm directly using what? Modify statement or what? Insert statement. The recommended way is always you have to use what? BAPIS. But here we don't know how to use the BAPIS. That's the reason I'm directly using the uh, modifier insert statement directly on uh, standard tables. Okay, now uh, where we are, so we are trying to insert the data into the table. Now I'll say, let me test it. So before that, let me check the contents in the K1 table. So 
in the K9 table, if you see the number of records, we are having only 298 records. 298 records. Okay, let me test it now. I click on the program, activate. I click on the program, execute, direct processing. Done. I'll give the customer number. I'll give it as something uh, test some customer. Okay. I'll give it as something test customer 100. I'll give the country key as what? I'll give the country key as something AB. Name I'll give it as something TST customer 100. Done. So this is my data. Okay. Done. You can see it. I got a message. Entry AB does not exist in what T005. This is an example for what kind of validation? Yes, anyone? This is an example for what kind of validation? Anyone? Yes, anyone? This is the example for what kind of validation? Automatic field validation. Already we discussed in module four. Automatic field validations, flow logic validations, module pool validations. This is the example for automatic field validation. So if I try to exit, I cannot exit. But I can click on what cancel button. Okay, now at exit command model gets executed. So when you click on this, yes, we are able to exit. So once again, see, so validations are working fine. Execute direct processing. I'll give the customer number again. I'll give it as something test customer 100. I'll give the country key as US. Okay, then I'll give the name as test customer 100. Done. I'll click on insert button. When I click on insert button, Record affected it seems, record affected. Let me check the table. Earlier my table has got some 298 records I believe. Now I got 299 records. What is that the customer number I inserted? TST cost, 100 is the customer number I inserted. So when I execute this, yes, this is the country key and this is a customer name. So working fine. So now my module for transaction is working fine. Okay, so any questions related to this module pool program, please ask. When I can use this syntax, when the database table name and work area name are same, then I can say simply what modify database table name. If the work area name is different, you have to say modify database table name from work area, from work area. Okay, but here. The work area name is also K91. The database table is also what K91. Simply I can say modify table name. That's all. So that this will automatically collect this statement will automatically collect the data from the screen fields and stores the data in that work area. And through that work area, it will get inserted into what database table or it gets modified because I'm using what modify state. So any questions in this part? See, I observed most of you, most of you just attending the course just because uh, you have registered for the course. Okay, most of you, I know 90% of people are not practicing. Okay, so it will be difficult, understood. We are discussing each and every program practically. Otherwise, I would have shared the programs and the recordings. Okay, so I am not getting any questions, nothing. The reason for that is you are not practicing. Time will be wasted, money will be wasted. Okay, we are only in the basic ABAP. Again, when you go to cross applications and advanced ABAP, again, the things will become complex. Okay, so take time to practice. I know most of you have not practiced, not even 10% of the syllabus what we covered so far. So please do practice. Okay. Right, so we are done with the module pool program. Then what I have to do, I have to do the data migration. I have to do the data migration using what now? Call transaction technique. So what is the first step here? 
you have to read the data from legacy system to internal table okay so in my legacy system what is the file cust2.txt is the file name and what is the delimiter in the tab is a delimiter tab is a delimiter so let me write the program so this is my module P program let me collect the information from this module P program what is the information you need to collect is what is the name of the name of the program okay so what is the name of the program the name of the program is or the program name is what z7am bdc mpp then screen number is what 100 and what else screen field names what are my screen field names kn1 iphone customer number kn1 iphone land one kn1 iphone name one this is the information i need to collect program name screen number and screen field names done now let us focus step by step i need to read the data from legacy system to internal table so let me develop an executable program this is the date i'll give the program name as something z7 am bdc3 z7 am bdc3 data migration using call transaction then type of program is what executable program i will save it in the local object i'll save it in the local object so first step is i need to read the data from what local text file to internal table so the first step here is read data from local text file to what internal table okay how many internal tables i need to take here how many internal tables i need to take only one internal table SA we took i think two internal tables or three internal tables because we are having what other than tab delimiter here we are having what tab delimiter so i'll take types begin off i'll take only one internal table i'll give the name of that as p1 underscore k1 what are those fields represents one is customer number type kn1 iphone customer number then what is the other field land one land one type kn1 iphone land one then i'll take another field name one type what kn1 iphone name one then I'll close this end of what t1 underscore kn1 done then here i'll declare the internal table data t underscore k n one type table of t y underscore k n one then i'll take a work area so type t y underscore k n one once again one problem Now I'll read the data. How do you read the data from local uh, text file? Let's say we have seen you have to use a function model called as what? G underscore what? Upload. So I'll use the same function model again. G underscore upload. I have to give the file name. Let's say we have seen how to select the file in the runtime. We have called a function model F4 underscore file name, which will display with the open dialog box from where the user can choose the path of the file. So here the file is here on my local machine let me collect the path of the file and directly add code where is the file available on the desktop i think so this is my file name customer txt i'll right click i'll see the properties this is my file name Control c So here I'll say in single quotes, I'll give the path slash. What is the file name? 
first two dot t. I am directly art coding the path. I am directly art coding the path because anyhow we know how to uh, display that open dialog box. So that anyhow we have seen yesterday. In file type, nothing is there. As a field separator, yes. What is the separator in that? Tab delimiter. So I'll say as field separator equal to what? X. This indicates what? It is tab delimited. Tab delimited. I have to use this parameter whenever the delimiter is not tab. Done. I'll remove the rest of the optional parameters. And internal table. What is the internal table? T underscore what? K one is my internal table. Done. Let me remove the rest of the things. Okay. So let me try to debug and check whether I got the data or not. Save it, check it, activate. So what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to read the data from the local text file to my internal table. So when I say F8, I'm keeping the breakpoint. Done. So this is my internal table. What is the internal table name? T underscore K1. As of now, it contains zero records. Right? Let me call the function model. Hello. Done. I got the four records. Good. I got the data into my internal tables. So I got it field by field. I got it in the respective fields. Customer number, land one, and name one. Done. So now it is. Now it is confirmed the data is there in the internal table. So we are done we got up to this part. We are done up to this part. We got the data into what? Internal table. Now from internal table, I need to map it to what? BDC data internal table. I need to map it to BDC data internal table. What is this BDC data internal table is? BDC data is a structure provided by what SAP just like we have a structure called as screen we have a structure called as SSCR fields we have a structure called as BDC data this is a standard structure given by what SAP itself so if you go and check the table so if you go and check the above dictionary you will come up with a structure called as what BDC data so if I go to SC11 what is this BDC data is a structure given by SAP itself it contains some five fields batch input new table field structure it has got some five fields program dine pro dine begin f name and f value f name and f value so what i'll do here is here i need to declare the internal table based on what bdc data structure so i'll say here if t underscore k one is not initial if it is not initial what i have to do I need to map I need to map the final data to what BDC data internal table map the final data to what BDC data internal table okay and if um, so here I need I require the internal table based on what BDC data so I'll say t t underscore BDC data type table of type table of what BDC data then I require a work area for populating the data BDC data type what BDC data. So I declared an internal table. I declared an internal table and work area based on what BDC data structure done. Okay. So see the technique here. I need to loop the internal table. Loop at T underscore K N one into what is the work area? W underscore K N one end loop. Okay, done. done. So try to understand the data. We have two internal tables. One is T underscore K N one. Another is what T underscore BDC data. Okay. So see the technique here. How you need to populate the data. Right. So see this. Let me draw it here. Then we'll understand clearly. So this is your internal table. T underscore K1. This is a T underscore K1 internal table. 
and I created one work area also. This is my work area, and this has got three columns: customer number, customer country. customer name this is my work area w underscore what k n a one is my work area okay and uh, what are the fields in this we have three fields customer number we have what land one and we have what name one okay so where is the data as of now in my internal table t underscore k number what is the data available let me open the file once again atm cst 15 to atm cst 18 okay this is my internal table data atm CST 15 to 8 m CST 18 done eight m CST 15 this is 8 m CST 16 and this is 8 m CST 17 and this is 8 m CST 18 done what are my countries here Country cases A, B, I, N, I, N, and A, R. A, B, I, N, I, N, and A, R. Okay. So this is your country keys. A, B, I, N, I, N, and what? A, R. This is my data and some names are there. So now I declared another internal table. Now. What is the other internal table I declared? Internal table based on what? BDC data. This one. Okay. BDC data contains how many fields? Five fields. So let me draw it here. This is my BDC data interval table. This is work area basically. This is a work area. And this is your internal table. This is a work area. And this is your internal table. This is the internal table. Okay. So let me put it here. What are the fields in that? We have five fields. So this is program. This is Dine Pro. This is Dine Begin. This is F name and F value. So these are the fields in what? Internal table. Uh, it will take some time, but uh, once you understand that. Uh, you can develop any kind of BDC programs. This is my internal table. fields one is program next is what dine pro next is what dine begin next is what f name and next is what f val and this is your work area w underscore what bdc data this is the work area and this is your internal table what is this t underscore what bdc data okay so now what you have to do is we need to transfer the data from this internal table we need to transfer the data from internal table to this bdc data so the logic you have right is this is the logic you have right 
when you say loop, each record will come from what body to what work area. Each record will come from body to work area. This is the first step you have to do. Okay, and loop at what? T and S for K and one into work area. This data will come here. Then what you have to do from this work area, we have to assign the data to the work area of what? BDC data, something like this. This is your uh, what? A second step. This is your second step. Okay, so let me put it like this. Done. And after this, we need to append the data from this BDC data to this particular what? internal table. This is the next part you have to These are the steps you have to perform when you are mapping the data to what BDC data. So what are the steps here? This is the first step. You have to loop. This is the first step. You have to loop here. Then when you loop here, each record will come to what work area. Then once the data is found to work area, here you have to say what assign. You have to assign the data from W underscore K N one to W underscore BDC data. Then once the data is there in this W underscore work area, the third step you have to do is append. So this is the overall logic you have to follow. Okay, so why we are doing all these things is see here. We are at this stage. We got the data from legacy system to internal table. From internal table, I need to map it to what? BDC data internal table. So I declared what BDC data internal table. I am looping my internal table. When I loop here, each record will come to work area. Na? So what is the first record which will come here? The first record which will come to this work area is what? This one. So the first record is what? What is that? 8 a.m. CST 15 will come. And what is the country here? AB will come. This is the first record which is populated to your work area. Okay, done. 8 a.m. CST 15. And uh, what is the country key? What? AB. Country key is AB. Done. So it, is, it will enter the loop. Then here what I'll do is inside this loop, I'll call one subroutine, user defined subroutine, perform, perform. Okay. I'll give some uh, subroutine name. I'll give subroutine name as map program info. Map program info. Some user defined name. How to pass parameters to subroutine using keyword. Using, using. What is my module pool program name which I collected? Already I collected the module pool program name. Now what is the module program? Z7M BDC MPP. What is the screen number? 100. So here I'll say using. The program name you have to pass C7M BDC MPP and the screen number is what 100. So try to focus here. We are calling a subroutine by passing two parameters one is program name, another is what screen number. Let me define this subroutine. Where to define the subroutine at the end of the program only now? So somewhere here it's a form program info. How many actual parameters are there here? Two actual parameters. So let me pass two formal parameters. So I'll take the names of the formal parameters as program name and what screen number. Any name you can take. I'm taking this one. Understood? So inside the loop, I'm calling some subroutine by passing two parameters. What are the two parameters I passed? The name of the module to program and the screen number, which are received in the formal parameters, program name and screen number. Then here I'll say refresh T underscore what BDC data. Do we have anything to refresh in this internal table? If you see this internal table, this internal table doesn't have anything to refresh. At this stage, it doesn't have anything to refresh. Fine. Then here I'll say clear W underscore BDC data. Okay. I'm clearing the work area. Do we have anything to clear here? Nothing is there. So while we are doing all these things, is I need to assign now. Second step is what? Assign to this. This work area is expecting how many fields? Five fields. Program, Dime Pro. Dime begin F name and F value. So see the technique here. I'll say W underscore BDC data hyphen. What is the first field program equal to where you are receiving the program name in the formal parameters PRG name. Na? So I'll say PRG name. Then W underscore BDC data hyphen. What is the next field? Dime Pro. 
Dynamic Pro is nothing but it will hold the screen number. What is the variable which is holding the screen number here? SCR number. Then W underscore BDC data hyphen Dyn begin. It is an indicator. It is an indicator for the occurrence of new screen. Yes, it's a new screen only. I'll say what? X. New record. So X only. Done. Then so out of five fields, I am setting the data for three fields. Append. Append what? W underscore BDC data to what is the internal table? T underscore what? BDC data. So I am assigning the data here. Out of five fields, I am assigning the data for three fields. So see here, I am calling the subroutine by passing two parameters. So these two parameter values will come and sit in what formal parameters? PRG name and what? Screen number. So let me document here for our understanding. So this is your what? PRG name. What is the PRG name? Z7AM BDC MPP. What is the other parameter? Screen number. What is the screen number? 100. Done. Screen number is what? 100. Okay, these are my formal parameter names. So what you are doing now inside the loop subroutine? I'm assigning the data for three fields. Program equal to PRG name, Dyn Pro equal to SCR number, Dyn begin equal to what? X. So I'm assigning the data for five fields in the work area. So what is this here? What is the program name? Z7 AM BDC MPP. Done. Dyn Pro equal to I set SCR number. What is the SCR number? 100. And Dyn begin, I'm marking it as X. So out of five fields, I'm setting the assigning the data for what? Three fields. These two fields will contain blank values. Then what you are doing? We are appending that data now. We are appending that data to the internal table. So we are appending it to internal table, something like this. That's what you are doing. Append. Append. Done. So the program information is mapped. Then after executing the subroutine, control comes back to the next statement. Now here I'll call another subroutine for mapping the fields information. My screen is having how many fields? Three fields. So I'll call one subroutine map field info. Any subroutine I'm using. What is the first screen field name which you have collected on the screen? What is the screen field name? K never hyphen what? Kunnar. So here I'll pass the screen field name. K never hyphen Kunnar. Then what is the value of this field? Already the value is there in the work area now. The value for that is coming to work area. What is that field name? W underscore K never hyphen Kunar. W underscore K never hyphen Kunar. So here also I am calling another subroutine by passing two parameters. One is the name of the field. You have to give it in uppercase. And we are in the loop only now. Each record will come to work area. So in that work area, I am referring to which field? W underscore K never hyphen Kunar means I am referring to this particular value, 8 and CSC. 15 this one done so we have to define the subroutine now so let me define the subroutine form what is subroutine name map field info this is also what is subroutine name map program info here also map what field info using how many actual parameters are passing two actual parameters so i have to take two formal parameters so i'll take the names as f name and what f value so i'm defining the subroutine by specifying two formal parameters, f name and f value. So let me receive it here. So what is this? f name equal to what is the field name? K never hyphen Kunna. Done. One second, please. Yeah. Then what is the other param formal parameter? F value equal to f value equal to what you are passing here. This one, W underscore K never hyphen Kunna. What is the value of W underscore K never Kunna? 8 AM CSC 15. So 8 AM CSC 15. So I got the data into my formal parameters. K never hyphen Kunna and value equal to what? 8 AM CSC 15. Done. Now, now I'll say clear W underscore BDC data. Understood? What is, we are in the loop. Okay. So. We are clearing this W underscore BDC data. So this gets clear. So this gets clear. I'm just canceling this. This gets clear. Done. Okay. So now I'll assign the data for the other two fields. W underscore BDC data. W underscore BDC data hyphen. 
for the fourth field f name equal to f name w underscore bdc data hyphen f val equal to what f value okay i'm assigning my formal parameters i'm assigning my formal parameters to fourth field and fifth field okay so now what happened we are doing a new assignment so this fine this time see the concept this should be empty this is also empty because i'm not assigning this is also empty and f name equal to name of the field what is the name of the field k and kunar then f value equal to what is the value i assigned 8 times est 15 done then we are appending now we are appending that okay so this will be appended append will always add as a new record so this is appended to my internal table okay i need to append here so i'll say append w underscore bdc data to t underscore what bdc data done so one field is map we are in the still loop only now now map the rest of the fields so again i'll call the same subroutine what is the next field next is screen field name next is screen field name is what kn1 iphone land one so i need to map it so here i'll say kn1 iphone what land one then what is the work we are in the loop only now what is the next field in the work area land one so we are passing the second field name and we are passing the second field value they are receiving they are received in our formal parameters f name and what f value so now what happens the previous values will be overwritten so here here this is overwritten this is overwritten now we are assigning the new data we are assigning the new data what is the new data now k an iphone what land one okay this is a new field which we have mapped to the formal parameters what is the value what is the value here a b a value is what a b so we are passing the land one and what a b so then i got it into my formal parameter then what you are saying is clear what w underscore bdc data so we are clearing this okay we are clearing this this gets clear 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 now this time again what you are doing we are assigning the next field so again this is blank first subroutine is mapping the program information and the screen number and what is this field name now k one iphone land one and what is the value a b a done we are appending now we are appending that to what internal table so append it will append the third record done k one iphone land one done it is successfully appended now we are in the loop only again control goes here we have one more screen field now so call this subroutine once again understood so this subroutine how many times you have to call me depending on the number of fields on the screen map field in so what is the next field we have collected k n one iphone what name one what is the work area field w underscore k n one iphone name one now again these two actual parameter values will come and sit in the formal parameter what is the f name and what f value so now let me overwrite Okay, so this will be overwritten now. This will be overwritten and let us write the value. So this is what? K one iPhone name one. K one iPhone name one. And what are the name is there? Okay. So assume that this is test eight M C S C fifteen. Something. What are the name is there? That name will be assigned here. Done. Okay. Then what you are doing in the subroutine after receiving that in the formal parameter, we are clearing the work area. Same story again. So again, let me clear here. Okay, this is that's cleared now. Right, we are assigning the data. So again, we are not assigning the program name. This will be blank. This will be blank. This will be blank. What is the name of the field? K name one iPhone. What name one? And what is the value? Something. Whatever is the test? 
8 times CST 15. Something. Test 8 times CST 15. We are appending it now. We are appending it. So it is appended here. Done. It is appended. So all the all the fields are mapped now. Done. So at this stage, if you see this uh, BDC data internal table, this one. If you observe this BDC data internal table, it is having one record information. Now. First record is having the program information, and other records contain what each field information. Overall, these are one record only. So once the data is mapped to what? Once the data is mapped to what? BDC data internal table. Once the data is mapped to BDC data internal table, I need to call what? Transaction. Transaction is already ready now. What is the T code of the model program? Yeah, I created the T code also. Okay, the T code I created for this program was ZBDC. Z BDC is the T code which I created in the model program. Okay, so now we are in the loop only. After doing this, just say what? Call transaction. Call transaction. What is the T code? Z BDC. Okay, using this is a syntax. Using what is the BDC data internal table? Using T underscore what? BDC data. There are other uh, parameters also. I'll discuss that in the next session. Call transaction, transaction code using BDC data enter. It will call the T code. That's all. Okay, so let me save it. Check it. This is BDC. Save it. Check it. No errors done. So what happens here? One record is mapped. Then again, in the, we are in the loop only now. When the second record comes, again we are mapping the program information. Before that, we are refreshing the internal table. Means this entire thing will be refreshed. Before you map the second record information, we are refreshing the entire BDC data internal table. Okay, so that again fresh record will be mapped. So now let me execute this. Before I execute, let me check the what is the T code here? Let me cross check once again. The T code is ZBDC only. Okay. Let me go to KNM and table. Let me check how many entries are there. We have what? 299 entries. Done. So now let me execute the program. Save it. Check it. No errors. Activate. So what is the logic you are doing? You are writing here. We are reading the data from local text file to internal table. And from that final internal table, we are mapping it to what? BDC data internal table. What is the structure of the BDC data? Five fields program, dine pro, dine begin, and F name and what? F value. Then we are calling the transaction. So let me execute here. When I say F8, okay, system is trying to access the file. Hello? Done. Good. I got the first record. I got the first record. Yesterday, the data is not passing through the transaction. So there are no validations performed here. The data is passing to the transaction, so validation will be performed. Done. Now I'll click on insert. Ah, what is that? This is an invalid country. Key, na? Let's say what happened? Invalid data also got migrated. But here, since the data will pass through transaction, SCP will perform those validations: automatic query validation, flow logic validation, module pool validations. Okay. So one option here is I need to correct this data, or I, can, I cannot exit also. One thing is you can correct it or you, if you want to exit this forcefully, say what? Cancel. Okay. When I say cancel, automatically the second record should come. I got the second record. I got the second record done. Okay. 8 times CSC 16. I will click on insert. 8 times CSC record affected it since. Continue. Uh, the second record is not coming. Now, text record should come automatically. So I should write leave program there. I have not written that. Okay, let me say cancel. I got the next record. Okay, I'll click on insert. Record affected. Click on cancel. I'll click on insert. Record affected. Done. Okay, cancel. There are no further records. I think that's all. So if you go and check the table, out of four records, three records are successfully migrated. I think I got three not two entries. Three not two entries. So one slight change you have to do is automatically the next record should come. So here, after doing the inserting, after giving the message, here also I'll say what? 
leave program. So automatically the current screen will be exited. Current screen will be exited. Let me check it once again now. So this is done. Here I'll change the file data. Slightly I'll change the file data. This is the file. I'll give it as something 7 a.m. 7 a.m. 7 a.m. 7 a.m. Something like this. Okay. Let me save it. Done. Execute the program. F8. System is trying to access the file. Hello. I got the first record. This is an invalid country key. Okay. I click on insert. I got the error. Entry AB does not exist. If you want to cancel, you can cancel or correct it. So I'll correct it to what? Something India. Okay, done. I'll click on insert. Record affected. Now when I continue, automatically I got the second record because in the insert also I wrote one leave program. Done. Insert. Record affected. Understood. So the data is passing through the transaction. So it will perform the validations. We will check the validations. So here we can avoid the we can avoid the insertion of migration of what? Invalid data. So all the four records are migrated. If you see the table now, earlier 302, I think, now I got 306 because all the four records are migrated. So this is a concept of what called transaction technique. Read the data into internal table. From internal table, you have to map it to BDC data. And from BDC data, you have to map it to a transaction. So what is the approach I followed? First, I analyzed my file. I understood that three fields are there. Then based on that knowledge, I created my module put program. I wrote the logic for insert, exit, and what? Cancel. And I collected the program name, screen number, and the T code. Then we are reading the program, in the BDC program. We are reading the data from local to internal table. And from internal table, we are mapping it to what? BDC data internal. This is the same logic you have to follow for any kind of requirement. First subroutine will map only the program information, program name and screen number. And the rest of the subroutines, okay, we have to map the field information. So how many times this subroutine should be called means depends upon the number of screen fields. Okay, once the entire fields are mapped, you need to call the transaction. And while calling the transaction, we need to tell SAP to make use of what? BDC data internal table. This BDC data internal table will contain what? Will contain what? The uh, pro module pool program name. It contains uh, field names, field values, all those things. So by making use of this internal table, it will map the data on my screen, on my transaction. That's it. So any questions, please ask. So we are doing this, uh, uh, this, this particular approach only to uh, to do the validation. Is that correct? Yes. The purpose of call transaction session is the data will pass through transaction so that it will perform the checks so that we can avoid the migration of invalid data. Okay. In yesterday's case, the data is not passing through transaction. So Directly, we are putting the data from internal to SAP. It will not do any checks. But whereas here, it is passing through screen. Okay. So if there are thousand records, then all these things will go by this screen. Right? By screen only, but here I am doing foreground processing. Okay. If you have lakhs of records, uh, what, millions of records, we will never do the data migration through foreground. We will do it through a background. We have to schedule the program in a background. Yes, in another uh, four or five days, we'll see that. How to schedule in the program, how to schedule in the background. And later point of time, we need to check how many records are processed, which record is failed, what is the reason behind the failure. All those things we have to analyze. Okay. 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 Any other doubts for this? So tomorrow uh, what will do is, yeah. So uh, when we can go for this approach, like, uh, uh, I mean, like, on, uh, uh, maybe we can suggest for the uh, users or the uh, business this kind of approach. We can say, like, for minimum of 
I'm, uh, no, I don't know when. You know, uh, customer is not bothered about which technique we use. Customer is bothered only whether data is migrated or not. Okay. So okay. it is the responsibility of the ABAP consultant to decide which technique we have to use. Okay. Basically, we use either call transaction technique or session technique. Okay. So okay. we'll discuss session technique in the coming classes. We will understand the difference between call transaction and what session. We will understand the merits and demerits of what each technique. Then based on that, we can decide. Okay, business is not concerned which technique we are doing. Business is concerned whether data is migrate or not. So which technique we have to use? It is a call taken by what? The team, the ABAP consultants. Okay, so after three by another three, four days, uh, we will see the difference between call transaction and what session. So whichever you feel feasible for our requirement, we have to decide whether call transaction or session. Okay. Others, any other doubts? Then so I'll try to share this recording. Practice, I repeat, practice, practice, practice. Okay. Even if you discuss this above for one year also, it is not sufficient. Okay. But somewhere you have to put comma and the project ourselves as what? ABAP consultant. Okay, requires lots of practice. Okay. And one more thing is uh, tomorrow we are starting an object oriented batch. Okay. Uh, 10 30. If anyone is interested to attend in that slot, you send a mail to that office ID or you can send a mail to me also. Okay. There's only an information. In your slot, in your slot, in this seven o'clock slot, once we are done with most of the core app, I'll start cross apps. Okay, I'll start cross apps in this month only. I'll start cross apps at seven a.m. slot. Okay, but those who are not attended object oriented, and if you wish to do that object oriented, and at ten thirty slot, you can attend it from tomorrow. If you're interested, you send a test mail to my to my ID or to the office ID. Okay. So, any other questions? Then so I'll wind off. We'll continue tomorrow. And uh, I'm not taking UI face Okay. Uh, yesterday, what are the app we developed? I developed in different server. I don't have access to that server now. Okay. I'm at a different place. So, right. I'll continue that uh, UI face session tomorrow. I have done it in the Institute system. I'm not in the Institute today. Okay, so I'll take the UI for class tomorrow. So I'm winding off, we'll continue tomorrow.